It's not a fucking, uh, we're not doing like a Marvel like movie here. Yeah, this I is know, a Star dude. Trek movie. She has weird and it, feet and the yeah. internet is obsessed with it. So I had to throw that in there. So cuz cuz you're obsessed with like memes. Sh yeah. I mean like what is this? Be your own man, Tony. Don't Memes are cool, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, there's the teaser for the episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to hack the movies. Today, we're talking about tapes with Tony and somebody else. And what's his face? Hello, everyone. Hello, Ryan. Hello, Mike. Thanks for coming back to the show. How are you guys feeling today? I want to know how far into this we're going to mention Christian Slater. Like, where is that on the on your Wikipedia list? Oh, well, see, Newt's an asshole when he does notes. Yeah. He decided to help with the notes, and he doesn't sprinkle in the behind-the-scenes stuff yeah. in the movie, like, where it would Does he matter. literally just copy-paste the, the trivia God from the, IMDb? The first goddamn note is Christian Slater framing oh his <laughs> $750 paycheck for his walk-on role. That would have been a good note to put in the part in the movie where Christian Slater shows up. Instead, he put it right away. Every time I've ever seen somebody talk about fucking Star Trek, because I like Star Trek, I watch a lot of Star Trek yeah. shit. Whenever anybody talks about Star Trek sex, it's always like, did you know Christian Slater? We all fucking know. Yeah, he's in it. It's just like anytime you talk about gargoyles, did you know uh, Jonathan Frakes did a play? We fucking know. <laughs> I would have mentioned that when Tony comes, I like like I sit near Tony when he makes these notes, and I sit yeah. near Newt when they make these notes, yeah. and they all like laugh at each, laugh at their own jokes, and yeah. they all really get into it. And you guys, it's it's cute, it's funny. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'm glad we're all in a good mood and we're feeling very healthy today, right? We're all feeling good. I don't feel sick at all. You know, I had a I had a nice meal yesterday, and it was cooked properly. <laughs> And I woke up today Spaghetti not throwing up. I woke up not throwing up, and it feels great. Sadly, other people on the show did not have the same luck, and that is why Justin Silverman is not in this episode. <laughs> that, yes. Thank you for coming in last minute, uh, by the so, way. Some, some, some big shoes to fill, <laughs> let me tell you. So yeah, let's talk about Star Trek VI. It's better than Star Trek V. I think we could all agree there. Well, you know, the big thing about Star Trek is that there was the odds and even ones right so all the odd ones are bad all the even ones are good which doesn't matter anymore not right? anymore that doesn't fit and that, actually, that was like three, in the 90s honestly yeah. three isn't that bad it's just it's nowhere fine. near as good as two or four there's some really boring scenes in three but it's yeah. overall there's some really good parts in three the, the problem is it's sandwiched between like two of the best star trek movies ever so like it feels like it's not as good but it's actually fine yeah Three's it's fine, fine. the uh, whole scene where the enterprise is like blowing up and all that that seems fucking awesome it was awesome yeah, yeah. it was awesome uh, let's see. Let's Spoiler see. alert, I guess. Yeah, let, let's read more. Of, spoiling 30 year old yeah, 30 movies. 30-year-old movies, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let, let's read more of Newt through the notes, uh, the, through the behind-the-scenes stuff, all at the front of the goddamn notes. Uh, let me see. The, the design concept used for the explosion of the Klingon moon Praxis would later be used in start. I already have that in my notes. So, yeah. You know the Praxis explosion? That was like, like the like box a... office of Star Trek V. Yes. Same thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's funny because it makes no sense. It's like draw a circle yeah. and then just bite out half a moon. Yeah. Again, Tony that's... Tony goes to me, do you know the Praxis explosion? There's a reason why I'm sitting here. Yeah. Yeah, but some people don't know that that's the name of the effect. Like that they call that the Praxis shockwave effect in other movies. J now. Just so you know, um, Mike and I have been talking about the Praxis explosion <laughs> for like 12 years. I've been talking about the Praxis explosion since I was fucking 11 years old. He, he calls me up and he's like, hey man, Praxis, right? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, I mean, but yeah, it's, like, off. it's one of those effects like afterwards everyone started doing it, Stargate yeah. did it, and then George Lucas saw it and was like, well, I gotta add that to Star Wars now, mm -hmm. so that's why you yeah. got that weird effect in there. And uh, this is the last one Gene Roddenberry watched. Before he died, he didn't apparently. like it. He didn't like it. He didn't like it. He didn't like six. Well, he uh, he has he had problems with it. But I mean, it's fucking Gene Roddenberry. He's the creator of the show. He's gonna have problems with it. Also, he was like dying, so he might not have been in the best mood while watching I, the I mean, movie. I mean, that's that's kind of surprising because like Star Trek Six is one of my favorites because it's the prequel to TNG. There's so much in it that tells us what's coming with TNG, and mm. you know. I just would think. I mean, like how that. how deeply pissed off was Gene Roddenberry about so many things with Star Trek? Because if you watch like the original first thing, uh, the the Cage, 
Right. Or like yeah. the, with the the dudes with the big heads or whatever. It's it's such a different vibe and like that's what he wanted Star Trek to be. Mm-hmm. And then you look at what Star Trek became over the years. He's probably he's probably not just rolling over in his grave. He's doing like fucking the, the, <laughs> the spins that uh fucking uh, was it Luke Hang fucking does. It, what, like, does <laughs> what does Roddenberry think of Lower Decks, right? Like that's where you go. Oh with my that. god. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Did uh, did Discovery actually make fun of Gene Roddenberry or was that was that just nerds? No, I I mean like subtext maybe but no I know they like made fun of like a crewman named Gene and like the internet was like they're making fun of Gene Roddenberry I'm like All right, are they actually or are they just overreacting yeah I mean I think Discovery is a watchable show I'm sorry it's not the Star Trek I want to see yeah. but it's like fine I guess I gave the first episode a shot and I was like I'm good it's like how I feel about Breath of the Wild yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I finally what? like. No, I, I, no, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Because people are going to take that out of context. I, I love Breath of the Wild. I think it's a great game. Yeah. But it just not doesn't feel like Zelda. Yeah. So right. that's you know. Yeah. Don't send the hate mail. Thank you for mentioning Zelda. Yeah. It's been a long time since I heard you mention Zelda. Tony, just fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like, mm. Oh, and Newt, Newt, <laughs> the last of Newt's notes. He had to put. Newt's second favorite Trek movie. Not really part of the narrative of this review. I just like to be involved. It's his. What's his first favorite Trek movie? Is that provided in the notes? Uh, I think it's it's Insurrection. He really likes Insurrection. <sighs> is this an erection joke? <laughs> it's a political joke. This is a political oh show. My God. <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> so yes, this movie directed by Nicholas Meyer, who did Star Trek II, which I think is the best Star Trek movie. Is that is that edgy to say now? Like everyone thought that, and um, now it's, everyone's it's a like, great movie. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was so good they made another one. <laughs> yeah, they even called it Nemesis. Oh my god! <laughs> you know who was in Nemesis? A fucking Shinzon. You want me to just go on on that? Yeah. I'd rather who, be making that video who, who, actually. Who played Shinzon? Uh, uh whatever. Uh, my uh, my co-star from The Dark Knight Rises, Mike. People have literally been sending me their copy of The Dark Knight Rises to sign. I've sold, I've signed like 20, 30 copies of Dark Knight Rises. Wow. You're That's so famous. How, I'm so famous. Can you, tell, very... can you give us tips on how we can be as famous as you? Well, just, <laughs> just as often as I've mentioned Zelda, you mentioned that fucking, your two seconds in that fucking Batman movie. Like, shut the fuck up about it already. We've heard it. Yeah. Like, why are you so mean to me? I thought you were going to be nicer this time. I, I love you, but you got to stop. I'm just saying, <laughs> you got to stop with the Batman thing. We all know you were in a scene in the Batman thing. Yeah. It's all, it's really That's cool. Great. No, it's really yeah. cool. It's, like, it's great, but like, we know. I want to know how many. It's information we know. I want to know how many pixels of Tony. <laughs> Or in that movie, is not it even, like seven? Not even one. Yeah, and that's, and that's the other thing. Well, that's, why, that's why it brings right. up so much because yeah. it's you know it's that's why it's funny. Yeah. But yeah. but it's it, it was funny the first time. <laughs> We're gonna do that again. So David Warner was also in Batman the Animated Series, and he was in Star Trek Five, yeah. and he's in this Star Trek. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised he came back after being in Five. I feel like if I was in Five and they're like, "Hey, you want to do the next one?" I'd be like, "No, I'm good. I'm good. Relax." Not David Warner fans? Nothing to say about David Warner? Uh, no. No. I'm good. Yeah. 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 What's the next? What do you got next? <laughs> what, what's what next on the list? What's, what's going? Go okay, to the next yeah, one. Oh, like, wow. I got it. I got a copy. You too. have the list. That's amazing. I, I was just following Wait, you. Wait, I'm going to. I want to see what it uh, Gene Roddenberry died. <laughs> Within four we, we know. We know. Gene yeah, Roddenberry did dead. die. Let's see. He's dead. <laughs> oh, shit. The set for the Federation president's office is a. Redress of the same set used for ten forward on Star Trek: The Next Generation. That's a good one. That's yeah, a good. Yeah. That's a new that's one. A pretty that's good a new one. one. Yeah. Real trivial yeah. pursuit uh, yeah. thing. The, there. the film is largely an allegory about the fall of the Soviet. Oh my God! Communist. I didn't pick up on that. At you guys all. didn't pick up on it. Holy shit! Wow. I, I mean, you, you know, know, it was very subtle that it was about the fall of the Soviet Union. It was did very you, subtle. Did you know you miss it, really? that Star Trek often takes issues from real life and then like? Makes it about aliens so that they can they get do? A, so yeah. that they can get away with it. I thought that yeah. was just a. I thought they were just fun monsters they interacted with. I didn't know they were based off real events. You yeah, remember the Borg you have the invasion? wrong hat. On. That's a, that's aliens. <laughs> well, I didn't have a Star Trek. You don't have a Star Trek hat. I don't have a Star Trek hat. I don't have a Star Trek shirt. I'm gonna get you a Star Star Trek hat. <sighs> That'll help you get fucking laid. <laughs> You know, I'm still getting comments from the Ninja Turtles thing where they're like, yeah. I don't think Mike likes Tony. I, I, no, okay. No, I, I, I love Tony. It's just, well, okay. How about this? 
Oh, in, in, in scene seven, <laughs> this is what happens with the Klingons. Blah, 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 blah. You want me to be like that? Yes, exactly. So Don't the bring Klingons. a phaser in your kitchen. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, the Klingon moon of Praxis gets destroyed and we cut to Sulu who's on his own ship because he hates William Shatner. Drinking tea. He's drinking tea. He's drinking tea. Uh, and then, of course, there's still... Wh so why... You guys are nerds. Yes. Yeah. Why Why don't they have seatbelts? Like, I know that's, like, a big thing, but it's like... Well, they, they filmed the is scene... Is there an in-universe reason? I'm, I'm, let me you know take I mean? this. I'm, I'm taking this. Okay. Okay. Is there an in-universe... Okay. okay, understand that there's, there's, there's a magic system in the Enterprise called an inertial damper. Okay. Which makes it so inertia doesn't happen. Okay. But what makes no fucking sense is, okay, so they have this magical inertial damper, but okay. it breaks all the time and they're always falling over <laughs> in universe yeah i gotta talk okay. about inertial dampers what the hell man? that's good okay, yeah. okay. so the, it, it's built into the ship it's magic they're magic space seat belts okay but they don't work that's the problem because the ship will get hit by like a rock and someone <laughs> flies across the goddamn bridge like what's the oh, dude speaking of the ship g getting hit yeah. In this fucking movie, there there is a big problem. The f there's a part where one of the fucking photon torpedoes goes through the fucking shields, and that's that's like not how shields work. And every time I watch <laughs> the movie, I'm like, this is a good movie, but who the fuck did this part? <laughs> Hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm going to counter that by saying that some of the practical models in this movie and like like the space station mm -hmm. and yeah. the Enterprise and all the ships, yeah. they look amazing. Well, oh they had God. time to do it this time, not like the previous film where they had to use test footage instead of actually True. finishing the effects. <laughs> I mean, I love that back when they you know would use actual models and they'd set them up and blow them up and all that. And that's always going to look good. Yeah. As good as it looks there, it's not going to age because it was a it was a physical thing, and I really think that's true. Yeah. Um. And I wish you know they would go back to that more. The only one who does it still, I think I mentioned, Christopher Nolan's the only one who still uses miniatures in his films, like the Batman movies, like Inception and stuff. Like when a building blows up, it's it's either a real building, like his last movie, he actually crashed a plane into an airport just because mm. it was cheaper than building a miniature. <laughs> but uh, he's the only one who does it. Like Hollywood, like even Peter Jackson used to do it for Lord of the Rings. And then he did The Hobbit. And he's like, nah, it's all digital now. So it's kind of like this art form that's like going away and only a handful of directors. There's, are you There's gonna a great digital or? scene. There's a great digital scene in this movie, and we'll talk about it when you oh, get yeah, to yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what I like about the beginning with the explosion, I love they're like, let's try to talk to the Klingons. And the Klingons are like, oh, my God, we're dying. And then it cuts. And it's like, everything's fine. We're fine. How are you? <laughs> like, it's like I, I love how the Klingons are so quick to cover up like this disaster. <laughs> but it's like after they saw that the planet was just like blown in half and the Klingons are like, yeah, we're figuring it out. Don't worry about it. We're cool. Well, that's what the Klingons do. They're yeah. they're like a strong species like that. They're kind of like we'll, we'll, we're good, but but they're not really good I, because they're dying. Yeah. I think it's interesting that the Klingons in this movie are not quite the Klingons we got in Next Generation. They're a little more like a like a Mongol horde type thing. They're mm. like very like they have like this this look that's different from that was from Christopher Plummer I think he had to watch the rest and wanted to differentiate himself and just yeah. not look like all the rest of them so he had them do it, the makeup and all that different I, th I believe that was a request there's also like and an I think it was a good idea too yeah. there's like an in-universe reason too because the ones in the original series they didn't have like the weird heads so mm -hmm. you could presume like like oh some of them have that some of them don't have that gene and right. then I know it was like a mystery for a while. It's just, it's not. It was like a fun mystery. It was just like a fun thing. And then apparently yeah. Enterprise ruined it by like doing an origin episode. It's just not important to what the plots are. No, it's like, like who cares what the makeup is? It's not like, who cares? It, you know, yeah. Some people have bumpy heads. Some yeah. people don't. Who gives a you know, shit? Cut to yeah. us talking about Discovery. The Klingons are ruined. Okay, well, no, those <laughs> Ask me on a different day. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Bring it. I watched Discovery and the one Klingon looked like Barney the Dinosaur. I'm like, all right, this is too far. This is really bad. Uh, There's a meeting held at Starfleet and this is like basically the whole like plot of the movie is that uh, the Klingons only have 50 years to live because they just, they fucked up Royal. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically Spock's like, we're going to try and negotiate some peace with them. And I pick Kirk to help with these peace proceedings because I'm an idiot, apparently. That was like the worst person he could have fucking picked for this. Um, was it? I don't know. He wants Kirk to maintain the pe like order during the peace conferences. It's like, hey, I know the uh, Klingons just, you know, brutally murdered your son, so we're going to have you in charge of this. It's like, 
Come on. I know it's it's a good character arc for Kirk. Yeah. Like, to be like, oh, he, but, like, realistically, they'd be like, don't let that fucking guy anywhere near the clay guys. I, I, I get pissed with these movies. They do the same thing with Picard. They 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 take characters that were very sensible on the shows when, when the writing was better and go back to the original series of Star Trek to, like, the Corbin might maneuver. The, they have the you know Baylock ship, and and the you know their Baylock ship is going to destroy the Enterprise. But then the little fucking you know ship comes out, and then they're like, ah, oh, this is our op- opportunity. We can get them. And he's like, no, 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 no. Their ship's damaged. Like we're not just going to go kill them just because he was evil. We're going to go like help him. That's what we do. We're like Starfleet. Yeah. You know, that's Kirk from the original series. In this. He's just like, oh yeah, let's go fucking kill him. But then again, but his his son has been killed. To, to his credit, he doesn't want to kill them. He just doesn't want to help them. Uh, no, the I, other guy is like, we have to let's let them waste the resource and then beat oh, them all oh, down. Oh no, oh no, yeah, because uh, like Kirk says, let them die. Kirk doesn't say I like want them to die. It's like a whole different thing. Well, I would argue that go, going back to Picard, I would I would argue that even like uh, TNG Picard would have made the same log entry that Kirk made about the uh, Klingons, about the Borg. Mm-hmm. I think he would have said that. Oh, especially by the... Because, you know, in, uh, like, First Contact, you know, when he's, like, hurt by the Borg and he has to sort of overcome that, it's kind of the plot of First Contact. Yeah, the, the problem with that is I, I didn't watch a lot of TNG. I used mm-hmm. to love First Contact, and then I found out that there was an episode where he had the option of like introducing a virus that will wipe out the Borg. And then he was like, no, that's wrong. And then you watch First Contact, and he's like, I have to kill all the Borg. I'm like, wait, there's, what happened in the lot, years between well, this? The, the, stakes, the, stakes, change. the stakes change, okay. though. I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. They did, because they were going back in time. It would have been... I get that, yeah. but he, he has like a personal vendetta in First Contact, where I think in that episode, he like kind of grew past that. So in the previous film, I think a Klingon saved Kirk from Evil God. You think that would have, like, you know, helped ease things a little bit? Like, what, what the, the monster was going to kill Kirk, and the Klingons came and saved him. Does he no, just... Spock did. Because Spock yeah, but was the Klingons friend... helped. Yeah. They, they were using his ship and everything. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought that was weird. He's just like, well, they don't mention fucking anything from Five. Like, the Five just never fucking happened, apparently. It was a good move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a very good It was a rough. It was rough. We get a new Lady Vulcan. It's not. It's not Sarah. Kim Cattrall. Uh, Kim Cattrall from mm-hmm. Sex in the City and Big Trouble in Little China and Star Trek Six: The Undiscovered Country. And Star Trek Six: The Undiscovered Country. By the way, do you think this movie goes more than a minute without doing a Shakespeare reference? The Undiscovered Country. The future. Oh <laughs> God damn it! Like Christopher Plummer. Uh, yeah, when his character's introduced, it's just almost. Just nothing, but to the point it becomes a joke later in the movie. They're like, man, I really wish I when, when, you know, you're in school and you're in high school, they shove Shakespeare down your throat. I think they should use this movie in schools as like, <laughs> here, Shakespeare's cool. Like, like you know, I guess nobody ever used Star yeah, Trek to this, be cool, this though. this 30-year-old movie that <laughs> old men watch is all <laughs> fellow um, kids. But yeah, so whatever happened to, to what was it, Savick? Savick. Whatever happened to her after three? Did she just disappear? They, she oh. she's left on uh, planet Vulcan in Star Trek Four, and they all get on the Klingon bird of prey, and then go back to Earth and all that. All right. Well, this character is definitely set up to replace her because he's just like, I want you to continue. No, and repl- she's a different character. I know, I yeah. know, but like the, the way it's set up, it's like, oh, this will be the new Savic, and it helps with the twist later on. But he's I mean, like, it sort of replaces her, I guess, because it's yeah. another. Yeah, because it's like, why Vulcan? would he just bring Savick back? But then, you know, you find out why. The whole uh, Spock-Valeris relationship at the beginning is a little little creepy. Yeah, a it's, little, it's like, a little like, okay, what's going on here? Uh, do, they, do they have a thing? Okay, why doesn't Spock just, why does he just refuse to accept that he's half human? Like, he, like people will be like, oh, if you he were does. I, because he grew up on the planet Vulcan and he was fucking bullied his whole life for being half human, so he wants to fucking hide it. Yeah, is but why. The, this is years later. He's among friends. You'd think he'd be like, yeah, I'm half human. Yeah, but like he went through that his whole life, so he's kind of just always, that's became part of who he is. I think it's beautifully handled because but, he, because Spock will show his human side with people he's close to, like mm-hmm. Kirk. He has those moments, but again, he had the upbringing. Mm. You know, upbringing stays with 
with you forever. Mm-hmm. I, get, I get that he doesn't really like his human side, but the fact that he'll just flat out deny that he's human, it's just like, okay. Well. Wait, 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 and especially talking about this movie. By also, this, his mom, you think his mom would be like, hey, Spock, can you just not be an asshole? <laughs> by this point in time, the character of Spock has become so human compared to, you yeah. watch, if you watch the first Star Trek movie and compared to this one, it's like, it's a robot compared to like a very, yeah. almost totally human character. Well, hold on. He had a great yeah. arc. In this, in the, in this very scene we're talking about now, yeah. he he turns to Valeris and he says, uh, "Logic is only the start of wisdom," yeah. which isn't something that a Vulcan would say. Yeah, yeah, that's why he's like he's getting more comfortable with that side yeah. later on in life. Um, so yeah, the uh, the Klingons are uh, they like show up next to the Enterprise and Kirk's like, "I've never been this close to a bird of war before," but he has bird right? of prey, bird yeah. of prey. No, he says Klingon battle cruiser. That's not about bird of prey. Oh, okay. the D seven. Stick with it. Keep up. Do they look? They look the same. No, no, they, oh, my no my God. They do not. <laughs> they Dude, do a not. fucking Klingon bird of play, prey, like, changes fucking shape and shit. A D7. You ever fucking see a D7? It looks like a cock, man. <laughs> it's, it's got a bulbous head. <laughs> big, right it has on a the big front. fucking head and balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's a representation of Gene Roddenberry's <laughs> giant fucking penis. <laughs> So you yeah, don't know anything about Star Trek, do Holy you? Holy shit, I guess I know what a D7 is? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> man. <laughs> there is a bird of prey in this movie. Yeah, so. there is a bird of prey, okay. Attention listeners across the galaxy, all the way from Australia to Houston, do we have a pube problem? If so, our friends at Manscaped have cleared you for takeoff with their fourth generation and brand new lawnmower, 4.0. Kick your pubes to the next planet with the Performance Package 4.0. The orbits in your pants will feel like you're in zero gravity when you use the best tools for the job. From the leaders in male grooming, join the two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get your rockets ready for takeoff by going to manscaped.com for 20% off. Free shipping with the code Hack the Movies. Hello, Kieran. Hey, Tony. Greetings, Earthling. Do you do you like Manscaped? Have you used Manscaped before? Yes, I am. I am one of the two million who trust my my nutsack to their tender shears. Good, good. Now, what was life like before Manscaped? How, how did you trim your pubes? Were- well, uh, I used to use just a regular pair of scissors and everything. Oh. And uh, also a, a a razor, like a one of those five five razored boys. Uh, how was uh, that? Well, one time I accidentally severed my entire scrotum. But you won't have that problem with Manscaped. So you haven't tried the 4.0, have you? I haven't tried the 4.0. I have the 2.0. Well, let me tell you about the 4.0. Ready for an out-of-world experience, fellas? Look no further than the Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped that has just taken off not only in the USA, but Canada, the UK, across Europe, Australia, South Africa, and Singapore. That's from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Remember, they always go to Singapore. So it's it seems more terrestrial, really, than out of this world, I'd suppose. Moving on, inside the package, you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver ball deodorant. I really like that. Yeah. And the crop reviver toner. I also really like that. Performance boxer briefs. I wore those boxer briefs to my sister's wedding recently, and I was very comfortable. Yeah, I love those boxers, actually. Yeah, and a travel bag to hold your whole solar system. Wow. First scheduled for liftoff, the new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, this spaceship is here to guide you on a journey to trim your body, balls, butt, and even your anus. (laughs) Have you trimmed your anus before? You probably haven't felt comfortable trimming your anus. But now with the 4.0, it'll give you the confidence you need. Yeah. (laughs) Sounds good. The fourth generation (laughs) trimmer also features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology, which we're both big fans of. Yes. You'll never sever your scrotum ever again. No, thank God, because it was a real pain in the ass attaching it. (laughs) The lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multifunction on-off switch, can engage a travel lock, and is even waterproof. The lawnmower 4.0 also has a 4,000K LED spotlight you can turn on and off when needed for a more precise shave throughout your travels across the universe. Now, I know when I'm shaving my balls in the dark, it's always a gamble. Always a gamble. You never know. 
you never know what you're doing. But luckily, I, you know, I, 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 where I live, there's a lot of blackouts. Yeah. And I always, I, it always happens when I'm shaving my balls. But now with the 4000K LED light, not a problem. I can see everything. With haunted house season coming up, uh, you know, you could be at a haunted house right now in one of those pitch black rooms and you could be trimming your balls and, and, and see it perfectly. And all the ghouls and ghosts will see it too. Well, forget about shaving. What, what if you're just lost and you're in your bathroom and you're scared to go out into your dark house? Just light up that paper. Exactly. You won't need a flashlight. <laughs> you won't need a flashlight. If your power too- goes out, you can shave and you can see perfectly in the dark. <laughs> The performance package 4.0 also includes the weed whacker. It's like having a little astronaut to chop your worst weeds up top in your nose and ear. I could use that. I have have nose hairs. Like, I just tear them out usually, though. Well, you're doing it all wrong. Yeah, it makes my eyes tear up. (laughs) (laughs) The weed whacker is also waterproof and uses a 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system. This nose and ear hair trimmer provides proprietary skin safe technology, which helps prevent nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. Your holes are very delicate. You got to be careful with them. You want to see if I could tear out a couple nose hairs? That's okay. Don't forget to use the crop duster, ball deodorant, and their crop reviver to help your little planet be on their A game while feeling the sun's heat. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their performance package 4.0 the Manscaped Boxers, and the Shed Travel Bag. Abort hairy balls and buzz light your that woody with Manscaped. Wow. Is that, did you write that? No, this is the, this is the ad read. The company wrote that? Yeah. They, they got some good writers. They got some pretty damn good writers. I gotta say, I guess it's like, you know what, they know what they're selling. Yeah. So, Kieran, did did I sell you on the lawnmower 4.0? Are you excited for it? Well, hell yeah. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, get 20% off and free shipping with the code HackTheMovies at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code HackTheMovies at Manscaped.com. Your dick and balls need some help. For a clean trinity and beyond, your space balls will thank you. They have to host a dinner with the Chancellor and, of course, uh, check off. Is this the first thing he says? He's like, oh, guess who's coming to dinner, which is a pretty good reference. I don't know if you guys have ever actually seen that movie, but it's a pretty good movie. Guess who's coming to dinner? Guess who's coming to dinner? Um, From the 60s, right? Yes, with Sidney Mm Poitier, and Mm -hmm. I forget who else. But uh, I don't know. I, I, As a kid, as an 11-year-old in the theater, when he said that, I I laughed at it. I didn't even know the reference. I just thought it was funny. Yeah. Uh, But the Chancellor, which is David Warner and his daughter and his advisors and General Chang, like, show up. uh, And like you said, General Chang, he doesn't have a weird head. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's... it's weird, but said, not as he, weird. He as wanted the to differentiate himself from like you know, Christopher yeah. Lloyd and the other. Right. He he looks like an Iron Grenadier from GI Joe, like those like Destro <laughs> dudes. Uh, and then of course he says the undiscovered country, which is yeah. from Hamlet, mm-hmm. and that starts the Shakespeare stuff that they quote all the time. Apparently yeah. the Klingons are real into Shakespeare. Yeah. Well, you know, it, you haven't read it till you've read it in the, <laughs> in the original, original Klingon. Klingon. Yeah. <laughs> and then I like that part because then it, the camera goes over to Kirk and he's like, "You." F- <laughs> He's like, I will, I will reach across the table and kill you. So, uh, is Romulan Ale, is that like their version of like Cuban cigars? Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's illegal in the Federation. Yes. So it's like, oh, we got some of that on board. Because the mm-hmm. Romulans at this point are not part of the Federation, right? The Romulans were never part of the Federation. Okay, yeah. Ever. I, I'm Ever. not up to date on, like, are they in the Federation You now? are so lucky we are here right now. <laughs> I, I don't know exactly what you have in your notes, and we'll, we'll go through them, yeah. but I want to throw out, uh, you know, something I, um, I like about this movie is, um, so uh, I, I probably told you the story before, but I once met um, Leonard Nimoy, okay. and it was, like, the nicest celebrity, like, encounter I ever met. Like, he actually, like, lived up to everything that you'd, like, want Spock mm. to be. Like, he was he was that guy. Yeah. And something I heard about this movie that he did, um, over the years, uh, I had heard that DeForest Kelly, Bones, got screwed over and over and over about getting paid. I just realized you're like, DeForest Kelly, Bones, got screwed. I thought he was just getting laid a lot. I'm like, I don't know how that's uh, No, but he would, he would get screwed a yeah. lot, um, you know, and, and not getting paid this due amount. Because, you know, if you watch the original series, 
you know, the na- lights come up and it's like William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly, mm. and then and the rest, you know, yeah. kind of. <laughs> so like he wasn't getting paid as much. Um, so he actually, uh, you know, had talked to Leonard Nimoy and Leonard Nimoy actually lobbied for DeForest Kelly and said, I'm not going to do this movie unless yeah. you pay him the right amount of money. Which I think is a super like stand up fucking move yeah. for for a dude. Like he didn't have to do that shit. He so. didn't have to. And yeah. like DeForest like knocks it out of the park in this. He's one. great. He's yeah. like, they gave him a lot to do in this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So I'm guessing it Romulan Ale is illegal because they're not part of it. It's kind of well, like how it, we do with Cuba. Like we don't trade with Cuba. Yeah, it's something like that because like at, at this time the the Klingons and Romulans there's two neutral zones. Right. They 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 they're like they're two foreign powers. Yeah. But I love how even in the future, people are like, yeah, it's technically legal, but we got a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, like, oh, look at this thing we got. Right. Um, Scotty, I think, did a lot of that in the original series, yeah. too. He was always keeping shit that he wasn't supposed to have yeah. in, his, in his bedroom, his qu- like in that, his quarters. And I like that they say the uh, Federation is a homo sapiens only club, which it isn't, but I mean, there are a lot of humans in it. Because I think in the original series, they mentioned that there were like... There were some asshole aliens millions of years ago that just picked up humans and threw them on a bunch of planets. So a lot of like the aliens are, look like humans, but I think that was just a way because they just didn't want to use monster mask for every right. fucking scene. So I thought that's funny how they like kind of work that in. It's like a technical limitation, but they made it part of the narrative. Right. If there is to be a brave new world, our generation is going to have the hardest time living in it. Yeah, I wasn't expecting the first time I saw this for the chan- chancellor to just be totally down with joining the Federation. Well, they they weren't talking about joining the federation. Or like they were like they he seemed yeah. like the most open with like peace talks. Yeah. Which I wasn't expecting. Yeah, cuz he was a true believer in it. I think it yeah. probably mirrors like certain cold war situations mm-hmm. like with like uh like Glasnost and stuff like that with the with the Soviet leaders kind of opening up. Right. Um, not to get too political, but Putin re- recently did a, an interview. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's an asshole. He does horrible <laughs> things. But his, like, understanding of U.S. and yeah. Russian relations are, like, really – like, he's really chill about it. He's like, yeah, you know, we want to do stuff, and sometimes we don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's kind of how the chancellor is. Yeah. He's just like, yeah. yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> But uh, there's some, like, arguments during dinner, and I like how Kirk is like, well, that could have went a lot better. <laughs> like, after they teleport away, they're like, oh, Jesus Christ, we really screwed that up. And then he's, like, in bed, uh-huh. and he's like, by the way, no more Romulan ale on the shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's also funny. Is this is this right where the the two racist crewmen <laughs> show up? And it, it's like it's like a oh yeah, public like, service announcement. No, no, that was earlier. That was earlier when they got off the uh, tele yeah. the teleporter. It's and like, then as soon as the door closed, they're like, "Oh, those Klingons suck." And they're like, <laughs> even even Kim Control is just like kind of be like, "Could you wait till they're a little further away?" You asshole. Yeah. <laughs> like they're like you're literally on the other side of the door. You dicks. <laughs> So yeah, then some action happens. Uh, the Enterprise fires on the Klingon ship, uh, which is no one made the order or anything like that. They find out like the torpedoes weren't shot, but then it leads to one of the coolest scenes. Something I wish would happen in like space movies more often, but they never do it, where the anti-gravity gets turned off. That never happens in Star Trek, but it happens here. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> those ships are getting hit all the time, and not once does the gravity go out until this moment. I think the last movie they did it was Guardians of the Galaxy, where they turned the gravity off. Actually, in the in the pilot for Enterprise, there is a scene where one of the the guys is like standing on the ceiling, mm-hmm. and he's like, he's like, yeah, you know, I know, I know the ship really well. There's always places on the ship where the gravity doesn't work right <laughs> and they never reference that again yeah. but i think that's a cool scene but this scene's awesome when the two assassins show up in yeah. like the enterprise suits and they're just like shooting the klingons and that's where you get the digital blood the cgi the blood cgi blood blood purple out. blood yeah <laughs> and it's cool because when the gravity comes back on the way they do the effect oh where yeah it splashes down yeah on them. i thought that was a nice touch <laughs> uh but yeah they shoot the chancellor yeah, uh, and they're freaking out at Kirk, and Kirk's like, "Well, it's us. We'll, we'll help out." So they send him over there, and uh, I feel bad for like Bones in this scene because he's like, "I'm trying to help. I, I don't know anything about Klingons. I don't know how their and bodies." Like, Fuck work. you. We're sending you to jail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they, they like they don't have any records of the Klingon anatomy. Not one. 
I think that's bullshit. He, uh, I thought I, I thought that was stupid when I was a kid. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like he, he fucking Bones went to Starfleet Academy. They study all kinds of races. He, he by that point and at that point in his career, at the end of his career, he would know how to treat a fucking Wait, Klingon. The, the, the triples episode. There's a guy who is a Klingon disguised as a human. He's got a little device that's like that's a Klingon. So they have to have some knowledge of. There's their... all kinds of times they encountered the Klingons. Yeah. yeah. But they have to have some knowledge of their biology, and he's just like, yeah. I don't know what's wrong yeah. with him. The, the other thing about it is he has too much Romulan ale. Yeah. <laughs> Super high tech futuristic medicine is him doing like chest compressions yeah, right, on yeah, him. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, there's no like. Wake up! <laughs> oh, yeah, where's I like, my tricorder. Where, in like, the original series, he had the little like thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, he's like, well, where's that? <laughs> where's, the, where's that? You know? Yeah. Actually, I think he does use that. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, also, they're, when the assassins were leaving, a little blood gets on their boot, and that becomes like a running thing. So yeah, they check, and they're like, no, we didn't fire all our torpedoes here, but it's saying we fired, so someone fucked with us. And then Kirk's just like, I'm just going to surrender, basically, to the Klingons. Well, I mean, I kind of like that, because, I mean, we're, we're going back to... When he does his log entry and he's like, I, you know, I hate the Klingons to yeah. this. It's like, we don't want to start a war. Like yeah. Kirk believes in the process. It shows his mental state. Yeah. He's not like, like I said earlier, there were admirals that wanted to like attack the Klingons. He's like, no, I don't yeah. really want to attack the Klingons. I just want to just not deal with them. Uh, but I like the Klingons complain to the president of the Federation. It's Kurtwood Smith. Uh, the bad guy from RoboCop. And he's been in Star Trek a couple times. I think he was like some dude who was messing with time travel and TNG or something. Yeah. With fucking Will Wheaton, that shit? Oh, was no, he the not traveler? that guy. I don't know. No, there I was don't like know a, saw, no, no not the travel. There was like an episode. I don't know if it was TNG or Voyager or one of those things. Tony doesn't like Star Trek. <laughs> I like the original <laughs> series. Uh, but no, wow. he was like going around the planets and changing their timelines or something. Timelines? Um, we have you know, no time to argue about the time. <laughs> Lines. <laughs> we don't have the time. Also, what kind of alien is he? I don't know, but whenever the president <laughs> of the Federation comes in yeah. into things, he's always like a white haired thing. <laughs> like that, that's kind of like the role he has to play. Yeah, because I wasn't sure. I'm like, is that just a human with like weird hair or is he an alien? I'm not sure which one he is. He's some kind of, yeah, there's all kinds of different He's aliens. a something. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> but what you got, uh, Kim Control? She suggests I'm just calling her Kim Control. I forget what's her name, Solaris. Uh, Valeris. Yeah, it's just Kim Control. Uh, she basically tells him to fake a sabotage so they don't have to. Re they're like, I love the whole movie. They're just coming up with excuses not to listen to the Starfleet. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, we're sabotaged. Oh, yeah, we didn't hear you. <laughs> and it goes with the whole thing about, like, French workers and their shoes. Like, <laughs> yeah. why do we care? Uh, but the chancellor's daughter negotiates with them, and uh, she's like, all right, we'll do the peace proceedings, but uh, we got to take Kirk and McCoy. We're putting them in prison. Or, like, sending them to court. So yeah. McCoy's the doctor. Yeah. The ship's doctor. Yeah. He's. What does he have to do with? torpedoes like like if you were the doctor on like the well ship it, it makes sense for the trial oh no because he it's let the, the yeah. guy die yeah yeah but i like they're put on trial i know why you're thinking that though because later in the movie he does the torpedo surgery and why is dr mccoy doing it why is there not like a dude in engineering right. working on Where's the fucking scotty torpedo at? uh because yeah they, this had, whole movie. they had scotty doing something else and they're like oh fuck we need the, mccoy to the, do something hold up the Enterprise is a crew of like 400, 500 people. They, there's other fucking guys. That's one thing that always bothers me about Star Trek. Like the Enterprise D has what, like a thousand people? It's always got to be like Riker that does it or whatever. It's like, how about the well, other fucking 100 fucking dudes? There's like 100 guys in the back like, standing there. Like, <laughs> Well, listen, Mike, if you do that, uh, the actor, once they get lines, they get paid more. And who wants to deal with that shit? Just have fucking Riker. You're already paying him out the ass anyway. Yeah, but by the time you get to like the fifth or sixth episode and now there's 300 characters on the show <laughs> like where do you go from there <laughs> uh so yeah they're put on trial and they're being defended by not wharf oh this irritated me okay? okay because later in tng um the reason why wharf's dad was disgraced is because of what he did in the kittimer massacre Right. Okay. So that should technically be Moog, 
because Worf isn't alive yet. No, no, I, so, I, no, I always knew it wasn't Worf. I so, knew it wasn't Worf. I just knew it was the same actor. So what I'm thinking is that is that like Moog's dad? So does it go Worf, Moog, Worf? What is happening? I don't know the lineage of the I, Worf family. I, I'm just concerned with the whole with the whole thing because it's all like yeah. There's no continuity. Yeah, but I like that that was like the only TNG actor they could get in there because they're like, oh, we could just change his makeup a little bit and he's the whole new character. But it's like a way to get someone. No, from they TNG. say his name is Worf. They say, they say his name is in Worf? the movie. I don't they remember say him saying his name is Worf. Worf. Watch it. They do, and I'm like, what? This makes no sense. Cut to the tape. Let's see. Or perhaps they merely wore Starfleet uniforms. That remark is purely speculative. I move that it be stricken. Colonel Wolf, we are interested in facts, not theories. Uh, but yeah, they uh, they are found guilty. It's basically a kangaroo court. It, like, they didn't have a chance at all. The, the best thing is the sparking gavel <laughs> when he slams it down. And I like that they took the universal translator off of them, so they got to hold yeah. those like big goddamn walkie-talkies. And uh, McCoy, again, has a really good scene here where he's just acting his heart out. One of the best scenes in Five is when he's like talking about his like father and stuff. And I guess they were like, well, that's the only thing that worked in that movie. Let's bring that back for him so he can have like a heartfelt speech to everyone. He's like, I tried to save him. I'm sorry. I also like that Spock and them are watching the trial on like space CNN. Oh, yeah. The Klingons <laughs> are just broadcasting it for everyone right. to see. Like they're all secretive. And like until this point, we're like, well, we got to show them this. What else do the Klingons like broadcast? Like do they have TV shows? Do they have like movies? Do it's any like of these aliens? My, my three Targs. <laughs> <laughs> There's like Rachel Ray Klingon making gawk. Like, what's happening? <laughs> now I gotta Photoshop Rachel Ray. <laughs> <Klingon>. <laughs> um, Kirk's racism came back to bite him on the ass because they have like his uh, his the log, log where he's just like, I right. hate Klingons. And they're like, he hates Klingons, and then they're right. like, Hey, McCoy, weren't you being a drunk ass all that night? And he's like, Wow, well, I mean. Like, and- he's like, and this is the first, like, clear connection to the conspiracy. Yeah. Because Valeris walks in in the beginning right as he's making the log entry. Mm. And she sits there for a minute. So you start thinking, okay, yeah, what's going on with this? Yeah. Uh, but they get found guilty, but they're not going to get killed because that could mess up peace talks. So they send them to, like, the dilithium mine. What is the, it? D- the dilithium mines of Rora Penthe. The penal asteroid yeah. of we're, Rora Penthe. But, like, it's one of those, like, we're not going to kill you. Where you will spend the rest <laughs> of your natural lives. <laughs> But I like the idea. They're like, look, we're not going to kill you, but you're probably going to die in this mine. So it's basically a death sentence. And I love that they have to demonstrate it to them. They're like, hey, guys, so it's really cold out here. Here, grab another prisoner. Throw him in the goddamn snow. This is what's going to happen to you if you leave. What'd he do? What did he do? What's great about this movie, it's the first one since any of them that the Enterprise actually works correctly, like it did in the, in the original series. Yeah. Because in the first movie, uh, they're, you know, they're putting the ship together. The second movie, it's like, it's like fucking damaged and shit. The, you know, the, the, then it fucking blows up. Then the Enterprise is gone for a while. And then in Star Trek V, the ship's all like fucky. Yeah. Finally, you have the Enterprise, you know, the way it should be. And I really like that because, you know, this movie is the, Maybe the only movie that actually seems like a real original series episode. And, you know, it's a story that makes sense from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And something about this movie that that really works well is I think it shows, um, you know, if you're a person that doesn't like or understand what the hell the Vulcans are, this movie like shows the best parts of what the Vulcans are Mm -hmm. all about, because this is sort of like uh, a mystery movie and the Vulcans use their logic to you know, figure, figure out this whole mystery. Yeah. And, um, I have to say like the, the pacing of this movie is just like fucking on, like on point. Like I never, this is one that I never get bored watching. No, Star Trek three. I like there's parts where I'm like falling asleep. I still like that movie, but like this movie is just, no, this one is fast. Like this whole series of scenes like here, like they go to the prison, they get into a fight with an alien. They can't understand. And the, the lady helps them, but then it cuts, Right back to like them on like the bridge, like looking for the boots and stuff, mm-hmm. and everyone's moving real fast. Like it's there's not really a dull moment, really. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe a few in the beginning, but they're kind of need it, and then after that, it's just boom, boom, boom. You were talking about the Vulcans. I just like that Sarek's in the movie, but when uh, Spock is first talking to Kirk about it, he's like the Vulcan ambassador, the Vulcan ambassador, and Kirk's just like, dude. I know Sarek's your dad. Could you like, yeah. Yeah. 
cut it out. <laughs> he's like, we've met like a lot. He's always yeah. on the ship and shit. Like I know. I also, by the way, I know. I know like check off and like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I know. I know the guy. I know, I know that you're banging Valerius. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I'm keeping that one under wraps. But I mean, if I'm questioned about it, I don't know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not sure what the rules are out there. So they fight a blue dragon man. Uh, and it turns out his balls are in his knees. Yeah. 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 Which. Not everyone's genitals are in are, the same place. I do like that. But also the knees are like a terrible place to put your genitals. I don't know. I just feel like that's a bad idea. <laughs> Later that night, Kirk's <laughs> talking about his uh, feelings about the neutral zone. And like, uh, <laughs> McCoy's like, yeah, you really hated the idea. He's like, no, someone hated the idea more than me. Like he's also yeah. figuring out. He's like, oh yeah, something doesn't really add up with what happened that night. Space lady. Is like, hey, I'm gonna help you guys get out of here. Wait, space lady? Yeah, space I don't know. Lady. Oh, space lady. Space lady. The shapeshifter. Girl. Shapeshifter. Oh, we don't yeah. know she's a shapeshifter yet. You spoiled it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie yet, you're not <laughs> clicking on the video, Tony. I would. You know what? I would love if someone's <laughs> clicking this. I like, he refers to the fucking woman in the movie as space lady. I also called space the alien lady. blue dragon man. I was <laughs> waiting for you guys to call me out on that. Fuck. Be well, like, I mean, I don't know that guy's name. He's so a Gengar or something. Gengar? <laughs> <laughs> no, th that alien is never seen again. That is the knee general alien. <laughs> That's how it should be in the credits. He was put there for a fucking, you know, plot convenience <laughs> joke. <laughs> They're like, oh. Uh, but yeah, she offers to help them escape if they help her out. Uh, and then this is where Christian Slater shows up. Cool. And he's nice. like, hey, Sulu. Uh... Kirk's on a thing. I don't know. I don't. Even, what does he even say to Sulu? He's like a Star Trek fan in real life, so he's like, I want to be in the movie. And then he was in like the fucking Robin Hood movie and like the Wizard and shit. And they're like, Oh, well, let's put him in. But I love how they like covered him in darkness as if it was a bit. I think even back then, people have been like, Oh, it's Christian Slater. That was weird. Yeah. Like, like, right. Yeah. I don't think Christian Slater was ever like a super A list celebrity. No, it was it's more. Like it was more like. I want to be on set with William Shatner, so I'm gonna use my. <laughs> they're like, they're I'm like, gonna use my you. name. Here's George yeah. Takei. This is this yeah. is the uh, Star Trek equivalent of in one of the the uh, sequel trilogy movies. Oh, one of the stormtroopers. Who was it? it uh, Daniel Craig was a stormtrooper in Force Awakens. Yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt was some goofy horse-faced alien in the Last Jedi, and I forget who's in. I forget everything about Rise of Skywalker. Anyway, that's what's going on here. Yeah, but it's like, it's weird. Cause it's like, all right, Christian Slater? Okay, I guess. Yeah. Like, Daniel Craig's a big name. Right. Joseph Gordon Levitt's a big name. There's so many good things to say about this movie. Can we not fucking talk about Christian Slater? So, more about Christian Slater. He was in this movie called, uh, I think it was uh, Stranded. Uh, and I have a copy of it here. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And it's directed by the guy who did Battlefield Earth. Tony, yeah? you mentioned Christian Slater one more time. We're turning off your mic. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else in Christian Slater. <laughs> so they finally find uh, evidence of the Klingon blood on like a teleporter, and uh, the whole Enterprise just gets torn up. They're going through everyone's stuff. They find an alien named Dax, like a crewman named Dax, and they're like, "He was on Ezri or Jadzia." He's not going to get it. I know. Why are we here? What? <laughs> What? His name is Dax. <laughs> yeah, Dax. What? What did it? Did that stand for something? Oh my god. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> we can't expect him to know. Really? We, we can't like, expect like a main character. We, we, we can't expect him to be on on our level of knowing uh, regular main cast characters, characters of, the, of the main <laughs> series shows. <laughs> right. Yeah. So so on DS Nine. Yes. There's there's women on that show, Tony. I know that's hard for you. <laughs> You mean, you, mean, you mean space women? They're space, space, there's space women. They're space women. Do they women. go around saying, hey, space lady, get over here? And there's there's a space lady yeah. on that show, and their name is Dax. Okay. And they are uh, Trill. Okay. And Trills have a symbiote inside them. Okay. And there's... Like Stargate. Like Stargate. Okay. Good, you're following. I'm <laughs> okay. glad. So... I love the reverse in culture that we've had since the 80s, where it was like, you like Star Trek, you fucking pussy. <laughs> and now it's like, you don't know who Curzon Dax is? <laughs> I shun you forever! <laughs> No. So, 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 50 latches! <laughs> so, so, there's, so there's this character on 
Deep Space. Deep Space Nine. You know Jadzia? No. The 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 woman. Okay. The main science lady. Okay. On I Deep didn't Space watch Nine. Deep Space Nine. I'm Ever? Sorry. You've I, never watched I've Deep watched Space it, Nine? I've watched it, but not enough to remember. Like, it was you on don't... TV. But, like, she's, like, the main... Ca- like, she's, like, the second or third character. Okay. What does she have to do with this guy, Dax? She has the same name. What the hell was this whole rant about? <laughs> she's not the second. She's, like, the maybe the fourth, fifth character. Yeah, I, she's big. So. Yeah. <laughs> She has episodes dedicated to her. She married she Worf. You're talking about Worf's that, wife that, here. You're talking about Worf, that's true. And Worf is in Star Trek, or Worf's grand fucking father, or whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently called, it doesn't really say Worf. It says Worf. I gotta see that. Is Worf a last name? Is no. he fucking Worf? Rajanko. No, Rajanko well, is the that's human the, that, name. But they like, took, he took it at, though, when he was on Earth, wasn't it? No, he doesn't have a last name. So... Klingons, His last name is Son of Moog. Klingons work okay. like, uh, like, nor- n- like Danish people. You know where <laughs> okay. where your last name is defined, or your your surname is defined by who your parent is. Okay. So like, if Odin, like Thor, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll do Marvel. Odin's son. Yeah. Like, like his name is Thor Odinson. Yeah. Because he is Odin's son. Odin's yes. son. But if he was. A woman, his name would be Thor, Odin's daughter. Okay. So that's what's going on here. So it's Worf, son of Moog. He doesn't have a last name. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So anyway, you guys gave Newt a run for his money when it comes to completely getting sidetracked during a review. Uh, but that's fine. So Dax gets accused of being the assassin. Do you think it's a bad thing to like go off of notes? Because otherwise we could yeah. just not be here and you could just read the notes. I mean, there's so many spelling and punctuation issues in these notes. Well, I'm that's be- guys, having I was, trouble look, keeping look, up. I wrote these in bed at like 11 last night after a very long day. I had jury duty yesterday and I didn't get selected. I'm so really mad I was not selected. As yeah. you were sitting in jury duty, you could have been taking notes okay. on your phone. So, so this, this this asshole... You could have been goes, wa- you could have been watching jury duty. You could have been watching episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. <laughs> he he goes to jury duty wearing a fucking shirt with his face I, on I it. I had a polo uh, over it, right? and my 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 idea was when I got called in to be questioned, yeah. I was going to be like, "It's really hot in here. Let me take off this polo, and then I'd be wearing my face." And they <laughs> they asked him what his career was. Oh yeah, in and the questionnaire, in the questionnaire before I went, they're like, "What is your career?" And I wrote, "Famous YouTuber." <laughs> And I won't say the they, other questions they, on camera. They picked him first. They picked me first to get selected. <laughs> they like, get out. Because they probably looked at my thing. Well, first they screwed up. Uh, this, this is all stayed in. They sent me an email saying, we don't need you. And then they accidentally sent me an email saying, we do need you. And they like, I wasn't sure which one. So I woke up at like seven. I already woke up and I'm like, they finally called me. They're like, you don't have to come in if you don't want to. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm definitely going in. So I went there and I waited all morning. They picked me first, probably because I was such a good candidate, but I never got to be screened because the judge took too long getting things together. We all got let go. Wait, so you didn't have to go? So you're saying you could have been here editing and watching episodes of DS9? So anyway, (laughs) anyway, back to the movie, back to the movie. As I said, I feel like we've been on this scene for 20 minutes. Go on, Tony. And I have a really funny joke for you, too. Tony. You, you have the con. Okay. Take us out. Does he, does he even get that? No. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep going, though. So, Dax gets accused of being the assassin, but he couldn't have been the assassin because he has Brie Larson feet and he wouldn't have fit in the boots. Okay. That's a very funny joke our audience will get lost on YouTube. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, I got it. And just like, do we yeah, have to make Brie, Brie Larson jokes? We're making Brie Larson jokes now. It's not a fucking, yeah. we're not doing like a Marvel like movie here. Yeah, this I is know, a Star dude. Trek movie. She has weird okay. feet and the yeah. internet is obsessed with it. So I had to throw that in there. So, because you, you're obsessed with like meme shit. Yeah. I mean, like, what is this? Be your own man, Tony. Don't. Memes are cool, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, there's the teaser for the episode. <laughs> 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 Alien lady's a shapeshifter. Can you believe it, guys? Can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> I think we've been had. No, you weren't, Doctor. Get off at the first level. Follow the gang into the mine. 
They don't take girls. So she's a shapeshifter. She's like a giant wolf man now. Uh, and then she turns into a little girl and breaks them out of the prison. But yeah, uh, Apparently he bought Captain Kirk's chair. Like the real original oh, yeah. chair, chair yeah, yeah. for a while. I don't know if he's like still has it, but wow. Yeah. No, at one point he did. Yeah, he like sits yeah. in at dinner. He's like and jacks hey, off. Kids, and <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm Captain Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, she gets him out of there. And then this this was weird. Uh, they're they're trying to enter the neutral zone, right? And they're trying to speak in Klingon. They can't use the universal translator because that'll get picked yeah. up, right? Yeah. So they're using physical <laughs> books with the Klingon language. Yeah, that, that that this scene is rough, right? Because this scene is because like, what if there be like a what do you have so, like on a computer or something, and it would give you like the proper pronunciation? Also, you wouldn't be using physical books, isn't right? Isn't Uhura like a linguist and she speaks right. all these languages and yeah. shit? Like it's kind of like no, she's I got a communications officer. I mean, I gotta like, say they at least you know gave her more to do in this movie than a lot of the other ones. Um, I like the last one where she had a, a, a fling with Scotty. I'm I'm mad that wasn't uh, followed up. On. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but she actually solves the whole thing by the end of the movie with the torpedo. Yeah. She's like, doesn't this thing have a tailpipe? You know. Yeah. I like when they actually give all the characters something to do. This movie's pretty even with like giving everybody like some screen time, which is good. I think that Scotty should have been with the torpedo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been better. Mm -hmm. I, I think Scotty in most of the movies is like the least used character. Except for like four. He gets a bunch of stuff to do in four. Yeah. By like basically Everybody's well rounded in four. Yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite Star Trek movie. No A, no B, no bloody D, <laughs> C or D. <laughs> Hello, um, computer. What you call it? The uh the shapeshifter double crosses them. And the morphing effect is pretty good. It, it's a little dated, but at the time it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. The split screen's not great. No bloody A, B, C, or D. D. I think that's relics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So the split screen effect is okay. Which is an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation so that Tony fo can yeah, follow the conversation. He's stored in a transporter buffer for several years. More than several years, actually. Yeah. Like a good hundred years or so. It's something like that. Yeah, and he comes back. He's like, my me old friend Jim Kirk. <laughs> I like the... I like the um, <laughs> oh, I've seen that one. That, so when they wake him yeah. up, yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah. yeah, is that the one where they're like the Dyson spheres? Yeah, there I watched a video. That? There's a video like on YouTube that shows like the sizes of all the different like sh spaceships, and you know, like the Millennium Falcons this big, and the, you know, and then like ships from Transformers and stuff. The Dyson. Then they zoom out. They keep like zooming out, <laughs> and the Dyson sphere is. It just keeps fucking zooming out. <laughs> it's like bigger than anything in any science fiction show ever because it's like the size of like a fucking solar system. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Th that's, that's one of the things like, like that makes Star Trek one of the best sci-fi things. Because yeah. Those like sci-fi topics. Yeah, right. Every week you got one. So yeah. the split screen effect that I was fucking trying to talk about 10 minutes ago. What did you guys think of that? Cause I don't think it holds up that well. He's going to punch me when I do this. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, the, it, so wait, the split screen where they're on the planet and, uh, and the shapeshifter turns the shape into Kirk. Thing, yeah. Yeah. Like it's okay, but like I I rewatched. Dude, it was um, 1991. No, yeah. but I rewatched uh, Back to the Future two recently, mm -hmm. and that movie split I, screens with the multiple Michael J. are like incredible. And I was hoping, I, I like I remember this one being better than I watched. I mean, like, wasn't I was, that a much bigger budget movie? Probably. Probably. I, yeah. have, an, I have an issue with it, and yeah. my main issue is that when she transformed into all of the other forms. Her voice didn't change, but now all of a sudden her voice changes. Like they kind of changed the roles well, in the middle. Uh, no, I think the voice changing was optional. She kept the voice so they would know it was her. Mm -hmm. But I feel like if she wanted to, she could have changed the voice. I'm thinking, yeah, it's kind of like Mystique. I think Mystique can do that too in okay. X Men. I'll take um, that. Back to Marvel again. Remember, remember when X Men teamed up with Star Trek? Did you ever actually read this? I used to see that in the store, and I was like. Just what is this shit? They're just trying. They're just trying yeah. to market to two different demographics to make more money. Yeah. Fucking garbage. I never actually read it. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's. I mean, you want trash? Like this is fucking. <laughs> look at this fucking like Wolverine and Data. Like what the fucking? What the they fuck? did it recently. I think DC did a bunch of Star Trek. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they did. Crossovers make money. I guess. Yeah. Transformers one. <sighs> yeah. Uh, but I do like the scene where like the Klingons go to kill them, and he's like, "Can you tell us who's trying to kill us?" He's like, "Oh yes, the ultimate bad guy," and then they get beamed, 
And I like that Kirk's like trying to curse here. Has he ever like straight up cursed in a movie before? Is it the closest we got? Uh, like, you know, this he's sh- like, you son of a bitch. And then it comes back. He's like, itch, itch, itch. It's like they split it up. Yeah. It's like what the, the fucking, what's that? Uh, the movies, Tony will be able to tell me this one. The one with like uh, Sylvester Stallone uh, and like Arnold Schwarzenegger and they all fucking get together. Oh, the Expendables. The Expendables. Yeah. Like that's. They fucking they throw everybody. Oh, to, you're still on the crossover. Yeah, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> they, they they throw everybody together yeah. into a fucking movie to make more money to get more people out to the theater. Why did they, like that's what this sh- shit is. Yeah, I'm offended. It's Why junk. didn't they put T.J. Hooker in the Expendables? <laughs> yeah, where is the fucking sh- Shatner in there? Come on. <laughs> Um, and you get Harrison Ford in that movie that you don't fucking give him a scene with like a whip. Like, isn't that the whole point? To, yeah. Like, uh, I do like this. We we kind of glossed over it, but uh, Scotty finds the uniform, and the whole thing is like, why didn't they just just destroy the evidence? And it's like it was impossible. Like, if you tried to phase it, the alarms would go off. Yeah. Uh, I guess if you tried to teleport it off the ship, someone would have noticed. But then again, two people teleport off the ship. No. Pro- yeah. Why didn't they just teleport the evidence? Yeah. Off the why ship? didn't they know? Like the in in later things, they would have known. That those guys were off the Enterprise. It's like, where are the computer? Where are the two racist guys? <laughs> the two racist guys are not on the Enterprise. Right. <laughs> like, that's what it would have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They take a long, like, no one, because they have a record, right? Oh, of yeah. The teleporter. Yeah. So someone could be like, oh, yeah, someone teleported at this point. They have computers on the Enterprise. Crazy. Do they not have Do they not have cameras to show you who was in the teleporting? Also, what's that whistle thing in the teleporter? I don't ever fucking remember that in Star they Trek. They definitely have so, cameras because in Star Trek Two, <laughs> they like replay the fucking footage. Yeah, that was Star um, Trek Three. They replay I, Star Trek Two with the multiple cameras. Right, yeah. I, I want to mention when I was watching um, this with Justin, mm. I see the scene where they they blow the whistle because yeah. they're doing the thing. That prop. Sucks. Yeah. It was like it was like a block of wood. Like it was really crappy, Did, and uh, it's center frame. Wait, what part are you talking about? The you know the whistle they blow, like where it's like Captain on the Bridge or whatever. Oh yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. The 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 guy who has it, yeah. the prop, like the buttons on it are like crooked. Yeah, and it's it sucks. Like, it sucks. <laughs> but like yeah. I've never. I mean, you've seen more Star Trek than me. Is that <laughs> a thing I? that happens regularly? A whistle? On yeah, the, I, I've totally. never seen that. Totally, it's it's a nautical thing. Oh, Mr. Spock, I found the missing uniforms with the Klingon blood on them. Uh, yeah, so they couldn't destroy the evidence uh, because of the phasers and whatnot. Uh, they find the assassins, but they've been killed. But yeah. again, they like they were stunned because if you shoot a phaser, they'll die. And I love how they. Um, they do the announcement. They're like, "Yeah, we found the assassins. They're in the sick bay." Well, wait, 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 wait. I mean, there's different phaser settings. Like, yeah, you don't have to stun. kill somebody. They said, "Well, th- their argument they made. I think they were dead. But what they said is, oh, they oh, hit no, them no, with they a, were dead. a stun at point blank range. Yeah, I mean, you'd probably die if somebody like took a phaser on stun and just held it on you for like ten I mean, minutes. Well, that's or the something. logic they want to use in yeah. the movie. Then I mean, it's kind of like a, I bought it. A, a uh, taser yeah, is it's not fine. meant to kill, but it can kill you. Like a yeah. Those guns that shoot like beanbags, they're not meant to kill, but if you put one right to your head, you're probably yeah. going to have a bad time. I, I, yes, and you know, this next scene yeah. is something that a child wouldn't fall for. It's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, wait, like, because, okay, all right, I had a problem with this too. Uh, but they're like, yes, those two assassins, they're doing well. They're in sick bay. We're just letting you all know they're in sick bay. And then Kim Cattrall walks in there with her gun to kill them. Yeah. And it turns out it's the Spock and Kirk. Like they, they, they like tricked her, but she would have known that they were dead. Right. Like she would a hundred percent have known. Uh, also, isn't she like psychic? She could have like just touched their brain and figured out that they were. You, the, the, Vulcans are not betazoids, Tony. Yeah. Okay. They don't sense things. You have to do a mind map. No, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. She could have touched their head and be like, all right, they're clearly dead. Yeah, but you gotta know, like allow that. No, that doesn't work. That's not a thing. Yeah. That's not a thing? No. You're right, but the scene's messed up. It, yes. Yes. Because it's a little bizarre. Wait, are you that, saying that she could have put the, her hand on the dead bodies? And yeah, I've been like, dead? okay, no brain activity. They're definitely dead. She, that way she wouldn't on. even have to do that. She would just be able to see that they're fucking dead. She would check their pulse. Yeah. Well, she clearly didn't because or, when they make the speech that, dude, hey, they're on the sick bay, she melds, wouldn't have went. Mine, hold up a second. Mind melds are like a whole thing that's like a, a like a difficult experience yeah. for a Vulcan to do. And you would know that 
had you watched Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, because there's a whole scene <laughs> where he does a whole fucking mind melt, and when he well, pull, when he pulls away, when they pull away, it's like it's like a fucking thing. It's yeah. not just like a like a. He's dead. The, thing, the thing is, why didn't she check to make sure they were actually dead so she wouldn't fall for this stupid trap? Because then the movie couldn't happen. <laughs> right. <Tony. laughs> the movie wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah. So they find her. They mind meld with her. She gives them more information. I think they decide that, or they figure out that um, it had to be a bird of prey that was cloaked, that yes. fired, which cool. up until this point, they did not can't new technology. Yeah. They can't shoot while they're cloaked. Yeah. And I love that like, everyone just automatically shoots that down. They're like, it's, it's impossible. And it's like, we're in the future. Anything's possible. Sure. Really. Right. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, like the uh, fucking warp speed was one stop possible. Can you guys just like fucking bear yeah, with us? Yeah. Somebody here? should just be like, well, they, maybe they invented it. Yeah, I mean, really, yeah. No, everyone was oh, so resistant right, to it. It's yeah. like, well, they invented the invisibility. Like, we accepted that. I don't know. I thought that was weird that everyone's against this idea. Right. Um, also, there was a neutron surge before the right. fire went off. Right, right. And that, like, what, Which that's is what like, like what alerts what them. Cloaked ships. That, like, it's, like, obvious. <laughs> they send, they head to the peace conference because they know there's going to be another assassination attempt. And this is basically when you figure out Chang's the bad guy, although it was pretty it's fucking obvious. It's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. The, I forgot the, to mention. Eye patch. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to mention when they do that phaser test in the kitchen. I love the security officers now have weird fucking vests. They're like laser tag guys. But yeah, they They're came like, in with the vest. Like, what the fuck was that? They've never had that before. They said weird, stupid vests. Speaking, is, of, speaking of eye patches, I noticed no. you're not wearing yours anymore. Yeah, what happened? My eye got better. I need to get glasses at some point, but my eye has been fine. Well, Thank good. you for asking. Yeah. Thank you for asking. See. George Takei, he has a nickname for this movie. Yeah. It's called Sulu to the Rescue. <laughs> he talked about it on Howard Stern. When he wasn't talking about his sexual exploits, he would talk about Star Trek occasionally. Imagine and if was... it was called Sulu to the Rescue. Star Trek he's... 6, Sulu oh, yeah. to the Rescue. He says that. He's like, Howard, I call it Sulu to the Rescue. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that he does. <laughs> he didn't really do much. What, the, the ship shot him like one time? Yeah. Yeah. He probably only remembers his part, so in his mind, it's Sulu to the rescue. <laughs> like, Sh Shatner, Shatner's like, dude, like, this guy would come in, uh, you know, I, so you go ahead and watch every episode of the original series. Sulu's, Sulu's in episodes, but, like, not, like, that much. Like, the main players were, like, Nimoy and DeForest mm -hmm. Kelly and even, you know, um, like, uh, James Doohan. Like, these are the big players on the show. And then you have, like, all the actors and the villains and stuff like that. And so, like, he was, like, and, and Chekhov as well. They were, like, minor characters. Chekhov when, didn't so, even show up till so, season two. So, and it was, like, the 60s. <laughs> so when Shatner's like, I didn't really know this guy. It's like, I, I don't, I believe him. It's like, he, he's yeah. like, he was in some scenes with them, like, here and there. But it's like, you know, George Sakai makes it be like... Like he's a fucking he was yeah. the one of the stars of the show. George Shakai's kind of an asshole. I just have to say George Shakai probably had the best fucking agent on this. <laughs> they, they gave him a ship, right? Yeah. They gave him all the shit. Like it's like, who are you? Like, right. the... <laughs> he's the best agent of all time. <laughs> yeah. his agent. Yeah. That's, that's the real star of this film. Yeah. Um so yeah, the uh there is a Klingon, and I'll explain that later, setting up a sniper rifle. Basically, I don't know the actual, what's the and name of the gun? It's a very, no, that okay. gun never appears in Star Trek ever. So it's another thing they introduce and <laughs> yeah. never He's got like a freaking that silencer. That one you don't have to feel bad oh, yeah. about. Okay. Explain to me, explain to me why a laser gun needs a fucking silencer. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> well, it may, it makes a sound. <laughs> And of course, does it? And of course, people don't realize, like, silencers don't work the way they do in movies. Like, that's not what they do. They don't go pew, pew, pew. Yeah. They're to disperse the sound, right? Well, okay, so I have a, a SIG um, Rattler mm -hmm. with a silencer on it. Yeah. And um, the loudest part of it is it does suppress the, like, bang out the front. Yeah. Like, you don't need to wear ear protection when you use that's it. That's, like, the big thing for But it, yeah. the loudest thing is the bolt still slams forward mm. so you hear it it's just a it's a loud ass sound because yeah. the whole carrier when you pull the trigger slams forward for the bullet to go out and then goes back so yeah. it's like it's like a metallic it changes the sound yeah it's quieter it's quieter but, but like like if it, it, if somebody shot off that like on the other side of the building yeah you'd hear the the yeah. the bang it, it's it always cracks me up in movies like what was it like John Wick two where they're walking in that like 
mall or something. They're shooting each other with the silencers. No one hears. Going down the escalator. I'm like, that is bullshit. (laughs) Oh, you definitely hear it. You would hear that so much. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, he set it up to kill the president. Uh, They, you're right. This is the part where Ahura is like, okay, they, their ship will have like a gas coming out of it, Mm. and we have stuff that detects gas, so they. Retrofit a torpedo. a torpedo with it, uh, which is pretty good. Pretty so innocent. I have a question. I have a tech, nerdy tech question for yes. Ryan. Sir. Um, so, like gas, like what would be coming out of the exhaust pipe on one of these ships? Do you so the, the think? neutron energy? <laughs> uh, so the the thing about it is like ships really have to manage gas coming out of them because like let's say that you had a a ship and it, a little tiny bit of gas was coming out. That would change all the math for the engines mm-hmm. in space, right? So, I mean, like, like for instance, uh, a hull thruster shoots out xenon gas because that's the the fuel that it uses for the thrusters. Mm-hmm. So it's a, you know, magnets shoots it out, all of that. Because um, I just never heard like of what they yeah. So they, they, tons of gas. they never talk about that though, like previously, like on the show. I'm just talking in like, like space, fantasy, like and fantasy. Like you SpaceX know? rockets have cold gas thrusters where it's just shooting. That's how it keeps it upright. Okay, it shoots gas out the top. So like, gas is super important to space shit. I guess right. that's a, <laughs> the best right. way to say it's just, it. It's just in, right? in Star Trek up to that point, I had never heard them talk yeah. about the gas. Yeah. You know? Well, like the thrusters. Like, right. so the, thr- the thrusters on a Starfleet or Klingon or whatever yeah. are like the same as like the thrusters that we have. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe. So, the way I would explain it, if I was Michael Kuda and I got to <laughs> be like, here's how it works, I would say that. They can shoot the the photon torpedoes while they're cloaked, mm-hmm. but they can't operate the impulse engines. They can only use the thrusters, and the thrusters shoot out gas. They don't also have something to. Ma- they didn't think about that to mask like the fucking gas. Well, no. Well, it they they couldn't use their regular sensors. They had to use mm. that sensitive gas equipment that they were doing, which they probably didn't even know they had. To which be they didn't know that. Uh, yeah. So okay. so it was like special equipment. So it was like uh, special okay. equipment. Yeah. And to, then their their mole on the ship was caught, right, so it's right, not right, like right, she right, could right. relay the information to them. Yeah. Yeah. So they blow them up. To be or not to be. And it's a really great effect. You know how I know it's a really great effect? Because they recycled it for the next movie. They literally used the same ship blowing up when, uh, what are the two uh, playing on? Lursa and Bator. Lursa yeah. and Bator, When they yeah. killed yeah. them in Generations, it's the exact same shot. Probably just yeah. like trying to save money, yeah. Yeah, but it's like, man, that's yeah. really, so, really so noticeable. So, Tony, Chang is on a bird of prey. Yes, that is a bird of prey. As opposed to a D7. As opposed to a D7. The D7 is the ship that's earlier in the movie, I believe. It yeah. Is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, mm-hmm. I'm Thank not you. up to date on my Klingon ships. I'm that's sorry. Fine. Well, now you are. Yeah. You learned a little something today. I did. Uh, so, yeah, they take care of Chang. I was expecting, like, when I first watched this, I was expecting something, like, a little bit bigger. But he's just like, Shakespeare, and he just blows up. I'm like, oh. Spe- speaking of Klingons, the subtitles in this movie, mm-hmm. the, the when the Klingons talk... The subtitles aren't what they're saying in English. <laughs> the subtitles are what they're saying in Klingon. <laughs> it's like, cool. Well, there are people that, that's for the people that speak Klingon. And there yeah. are people that, you know, which, take Klingon <laughs> courses. Uh, but I yeah, they, they beam down to the peace conference. Scotty kills the assassin. <laughs> Just, I mean, here, you have Scotty. He, he, I, he I, I don't know the why door. a security officer wouldn't do that. They said Scotty. He just walks in and shoots the guy. It's just what they do on Star Trek. They have one of, some of the main cast. Because the main cast, they're looking for more screen time. I know, So they're I not going to have like the security dude do it, who is the person who should yeah. actually do it. So they kill the assassin. They round up all the conspirators. And then... Me and you were talking about this. So when I first saw this movie, I rented it from like Netflix and it was the director's cut. Yeah. Where the Klingon is not a Klingon. It's a person. I don't know which person it is. And they like take his mask off. Like Scooby Doo, but in the version yeah, that's on that's Amazon stupid. right now, the one I saw, because I the theatrical remember cut. that it's the theatrical cut, and it's just a Klingon, and I think that makes more sense. It uh, that's why it was cut out because it's like no, because there were other conspirators. Yeah. Why wouldn't it be a Klingon? I don't know yeah. why they wanted to add the extra bit of, like I get it, but it wasn't needed. But they leave in a thing 
They leave in a shot where, like, the guy's about to take the mask off, but they make it look like he's checking his pulse. Yeah, because the conspirators are Cartwright, Valeris, Chang. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. Yeah, and yeah. whoever that guy and was. And whoever that guy was. Yeah. Was it, oh, was it maybe the Vulcan from earlier in the movie that's in that, uh, when uh, Sarek is meeting with the president and the Klingon, they cut to that other Vulcan? Oh, that's interesting. Was that maybe the Klingon? I don't know. I have to check. Yeah. I have to check the deleted scenes. Uh, but yeah, Kirk does a whole like, why can't we all get along speech? And will you claps. actually check the deleted scenes for that after I this? will. Mm-hmm. I will check it. I'm checking it right now. Mm-hmm. There it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he does a whole like, why can't we get along speech? And everyone claps. And I guess the Klingons are cool now. And then uh, Sulu fucks off because he hates Shatner. He's like, I'm going to go on my own ship. Bye. And then... Uh, how does it end? Like, Starfleet wants them to come back. Starfleet right? wants them to come back to be decommissioned. Are they decommissioned in the ship? or They're decommissioning the ship and the people. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> like, okay, that's really mean. Because yeah. nothing really looked... Wait, why would they decommission the ship? Isn't it brand new? Because it, it, it was the final voyage. It was already... Did you watch the movie? What the heck, man? Okay, wait, but, but like, why did they even rebuild it in five if they're just going to retire it like three years later? No, well, five isn't. A well, very I mean good that's three fifths of yeah. a five year mission. So you know, <laughs> maybe there was newer shit coming out. They had to get to the Enterprise B, so it could. How long it was out. it between the A and the B? I don't know because the B's never been on, on screen. I, well, the, it was in uh, Generations, the yeah, beginning, yeah, was, right? Yeah, it was in the Generations. Oh yeah, when that's Cameron when they from it, yeah. uh, Ferris Bueller's the. So it moment. would have been from when they. Oh, with the A? Well, the A would have been from Star Trek Four. So the time between Star Trek, the end of Star Trek Four, and. And and, and the, 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 end, the end of, of this the end yeah. of this movie when they de- decommission it yeah yeah and then there's time between probably when they decommission it to when they launch the B mm-hmm. yeah and then there's the B which is in Generations mm-hmm. yeah and then the C which is in Yesterday's Enterprise mm-hmm. and the D which is the one from Next Generation Next Generation yeah. and the E which is the one from the like first, first contact. contact on and then right. the J that's in Discovery now. But that isn't Discovery like in the past. Keep watching. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you. So you had a problem. What about the uh, H? They skipped them. I don't know. Time passed. Are, are we going to see that? That's going to be in lower decks. It's going to be uh, in lower decks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you had a problem with the end here. He quotes uh, Peter Pan, I think. Second start of the ride. And straight on till morning. They're. Why are they defying the orders? What What's the point? Oh, we're going to go fly over there and then fly by, back? By the way, they're on thin ice. Like, they were just wrapped up in a conspiracy. And, like, they, like I sure. wanted to play it really safe right now. Yeah, no, I mean, the quote's nice. It's, yeah. it's a nice send-off to the crew and everything, but it doesn't make sense in yeah. the story. Kirk, like, Kirk was always, like, that uh, defiant type. And I think in that moment, the, like, you, look, you, you see the shots of, like, the actors and all that and the characters, and they're all, like, almost in tears because they're like oh shit like our whole fucking careers are about to end so he's like trying to make them feel better yeah, yeah. that's what that is yeah and then and then um data goes to hell with our orders <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 right that was spock not data which i think is a callback no oh. so data says oh to right. hell with our orders when they go in first contact to get the board right which right. is a callback to this to movie this movie yes when spock says right yeah. right right and uh, they do the whole thing where they fly away and their like signatures are there, which Avengers yeah. Endgame ripped off recently. And uh, yeah, the last captain's log is him basically saying, hey, guys, check out Next Generation. Yeah. Basically what he says is like, there will be a new crew and a new ship and you can watch it whenever it comes out. On there's, there's Fox 29. There, there's, 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 Fox 29. <laughs> there's also a part, I guess, uh, you know, like Shatner does the, you know, where, to boldly go where no man where no one has gone before, right. before he finally corrects himself it's it's sort of like uh more to his character arc kind of mm. kind of like how spock had a lot of character arc throughout the movies i kind of like that they he, they kind of updated that because they needed to yeah right right you know? and it's a really really great ending to the original series it's beautifully done and then they ruined it in generations when kirk fell off a rickety bridge captain on the bridge bridge on the captain. That's what he should have said when he died. <laughs> Bridge on the captain. Which, by the way, was his second death. Because I think the first one, uh, what's his call? What's his face? Malcolm McDowell just shot him in the back, and he was like, "Ow!" And that's how yeah, he but died. like on the original series, they died like every fucking episode. Like yeah. you, you know, 
And then they buried him under rocks. <laughs> like, that's yeah. really mean to Kurt. And then in the book uh, that he that Shatner wrote, yes. uh, those those same rocks crumble away as he was beamed out oh. and they revive him. Oh. Because Shatner wrote that. Yes, he did. And then Spock goes on to go into the J.J. Abrams timeline and then he dies between movies. Shatner, Shatner writing Star Trek books. I just imagine him standing by his mailbox in California just like opening us as the check here yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still mad. The last time we saw Spock, it was like he was sending a message to the ship from his like living room in Star Trek Into Darkness. It's like, oh, that's how we're going to end Spock. He's, he's just Skyping onto yeah. the fucking ship. It was like awful. And then the next movie, they're like, Spock's dead. Like, oh, okay. I, I'd like to pretend that those movies don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Star Trek VI. I really like it. Not my favorite. I think uh, I think my favorites are like 2, 4, and then this one. My favorite would be 4. Uh, four is a good one. Four is a good one, and it's better because it's like pretty much a comedy movie. That's, mm. a, that's one that you got to watch with people. I've seen it. A couple times in the theater, been lucky lucky enough. Yeah. And if you see it with a lot of people, it's a lot more fun. If you're sitting there, you know, in your house and it's dark and you're by yourself and you're like popping in the fucking VHS tape and you're like <laughs> nuclear vessels. And then you look and you look, and, and you look over and it's like nobody's there and you're like eh. mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you speaking from experience, Mike? Yes. Also, do you sit in the dark like I, I, just, I do. I do. I do. you change your voice to some <laughs> weird mousy creature? Yes. Uh, it's a mousy creature? <laughs> Oh, hey, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just picturing you like streaming and you're like, all right, goodbye, guys. Turn off the camera. You're like, I gotta watch Star Trek 4. <laughs> and I'm like, uh... <laughs> Turn into Mr. Burns. <laughs> 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 yeah. Ryan, what do you think about Star Trek 6? Uh, this was the first Star Trek movie I saw in theaters. Okay. I lost a tooth in it and made my dad like go on the floor to get it and it was a disaster. Um, <laughs> This, this is, you know, and people are going to say, oh, I like Wrath of Khan better. I like all of that. Mm. Because I'm primarily a TNG fan and, like, this is leading into that and everything. It's my favorite movie. I love, as a sci-fi movie, how it's very consistent. The rules of the universe stay the same. Mm -hmm. They don't just say, oh, people won't think about that. Suspend your disbelief. It's, like, very, like, like what it says it is. Yeah. So it's a great movie. I yeah, like I it. think it's I think it's really really. I feel like it's one that gets overlooked a little bit though, and it doesn't drag. This no. movie moves. We, we talked about it earlier. Yeah. Like, it's just like boom, boom, boom. It's there. Um, this was the movie that pretty much got me into Star Trek. I had mm. I had gone with my dad to see Star Trek for. Uh, when it came out, but I was like kind of young at the time. I liked it, but it wasn't really. I was a little too young for it. That, that was like eighty six or something. Way, I was that's like kind of me with TNG and Voyager. Like they were on, but I was like too young to enjoy. It. And then right. I just never got around to rewatching it. Whereas and when I was a teen, the original series was on Sci Fi Channel, and I got real into that. That's so, cool. I mean, yeah. I figured you were a teen when that was going on, right? Because you're like forty two, <sighs> forty three. What? Your dick. My mom was born like two years before Star Trek aired. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I I ended up seeing this movie in the theater, and mm. like this was the like I, I also saw five in the theater, and I was like, you know, I, that didn't make me fall in love with Star Trek. I just saw it was just a movie I <laughs> that, saw. That's like when I saw Insurrection in theaters, and I'm like, oh, this is, yeah, this is boring. <laughs> but I but I saw I saw six in the theater, and I, I absolutely lo like loved it. I was like, oh, I bec and because it was like one of the first things I saw, like the their send off. Mm. I was like, oh, it made me want to know more about yeah. about Star Trek and the characters and all that and I, I thought it was a really you know entertaining well done movie so around that same time they were late at night they'd always be airing like original series episodes so because I knew it I'd seen the movie and I liked it mm -hmm. I started watching uh, original series episodes and I then then that's when I really got into Star Trek because like I was like oh I like this even better because I like the campiness yeah. to it and it's I, that, it's more that's colorful where I and am. fun yeah. you I know? always joke I'm like the original series like it pleases two things it, it tells really good stories and also has like really cheesy effects yeah. and as someone who grew up with like Mystery Science Theater I'm exactly. getting the best of both it's, worlds it's like there the, it's like the old Batman it's like stupid but it's yeah. just fun you know yeah. and yeah. um. You know that you know that's my fa that's yeah. my, still my favorite thing about Star Trek. It's totally different than any type 
of other Star Trek that ever came after. It was, Star Trek got really, I feel like, professional after that once the yeah. movies happened. But the original yeah. series was very like low budget. And, and, I mean, you know, they put a they put like a horn on like a, a puppy, and they're like, look at our space. Literally, monster. yeah, yeah. And that's that's what made it fun. My favorite fun, was though, the plant you know? that was like clearly just a d- sock yeah. puppet. And, like, and, the, and the thing is, it didn't matter because they still told a good story. It's like who cares mm-hmm. what we were just talking about the special effects earlier. It's like who cares what no. thing they have on their head or whatever. It doesn't matter as long as you're telling a good story and it's you do it well. You know, mm. it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so that was a really good time. Thank you, Mike, for coming back. You're always welcome. You're always welcome. Because <laughs> the fans love you. They love yeah, all the episodes. Yeah. Of you. Yeah. The Ninja Turtle episode was the most concise criticism of that movie that I've ever seen. So, you were just really on point. You were at the top of your game. Can I? Can I? Can I <laughs> so if you want to see. Um, uh, somebody talk uh, seriously about this. There's there there are other Star Trek podcasts <laughs> on the internet to watch to probably get better information than we gave here. Uh, Mike, that's a terrible idea. But if you like uh, podcasts, you can go to our podcast feed and listen to the audio version of this. Are you okay there? This thing's like falling. The rickety things like falling, <laughs> falling, literally falling. Off. I'm fixing it because it's actually falling okay. Off. So, so are we gonna have a real? Are we gonna have a real of guests? <laughs> Fixing the equipment. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you want to listen to these episodes, instead Standard of wa- Orbit, Standard Orbit, the podcast oh, good. is called. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Check them and out. They're part of the Trek FM podcast network. They they do their research. Yeah, it's not this. <laughs> right. So the Hack the Movies podcast feed. It can be found anywhere podcasts are found. Or you go to hackthemovies.com. Uh, check that out. Check us out on Patreon. I'm probably putting a lot of the long Star Trek rants. As clips on Patreon, Tony. To be, to be fair, yeah. dur- during my streams, when p- when people aren't happy with what I'm saying, I'm like, just go f- watch somebody else. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I do the same thing to myself. Yeah. Okay. I, so don't be mad at me. I, I just want to mention, Mike and I are making our triumphant return to YouTube Ooh. with uh, talk about games. It's coming back. It's coming back. Are right we? Right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Why are you pointing to the wall in the store? <laughs> right, right there. It's <laughs> oh, you're going to do it from my store? From your, yeah. Okay. Weird yeah. place to do Certainly. it, but okay. Yeah. I thought you built a nice podcast studio, but if you want to do it in the corner over there, I'll let you. We're still keeping the lore up, huh? <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's, we go back and forth. Like, uh, <laughs> I've died several times. Justin has died multiple times. Uh. Like, characters come back. We... We don't know who Crystal is, and then we do know. It's, 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 there's no fucking continuity on this show. Very professional. <laughs> yes, like, right. share, and subscribe. Bye. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talking about tapes.